In lesson 5.1, we're considering linear equations and the graphs of these linear functions. Um, an equation is called linear if it meets this criteria, that each term contains only one variable to the first power, or the term is a constant. And I've got three examples of linear equations listed here. So something like 4x plus 2y equals 12, that's a linear equation. Notice that um, each variable is raised to the first power, and it's either a term with that or it's a constant, like the number 12. A solution of such a linear equation in two unknowns is always going to be a pair of numbers, one for each variable that when we substitute back into the equation, makes the equation true. Therefore, each solution is an ordered pair that can be plotted as a point in the rectangular coordinate system. Now, basically, that's what that is. It's going to be an ordered pair. But there are an infinite number of these ordered pair solutions, which together form a graph of the, of the equation, which together form the graph of a line. Now, in graphing these lines, we need to understand what slope is. And slope is defined as rate of change, or rise over run, or you might have heard it described as vertical change over horizontal change. It's the m in the equation y equals mx plus b. And I know all this probably sounds very familiar to you. <clears throat> the m can be determined by subtracting the y values over subtracting the x values for two given points. Just be careful about the order. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that'll give you the slope of the line. One of the things that you should notice is that as x increases and y increases, the slope is positive. The line is on an up upward trend. As x increases and y decreases, the slope is negative. And the steeper the line is, is determined by the absolute value of the slope. So the larger that number is, the steeper the line is. Now in this um, slide, we've got the slope-intercept form of a line. And this is basic information here. This is what this is all about, um, where we have um, a line given here and um, the point where the line crosses the y-axis is referred to as the uh, y-intercept, and the slope of the line is the difference in subtracting the y's over subtracting the x's, um, or this m here that's in the equation. <laughs> now, for an example, suppose we have this line that was given x plus 3y equals 6. That satisfies that equation for lin that definition for a linear equation. So what we want to do is we want to take this line that we have given right here and we want to solve for y. We want to make it look like our slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. So to do that we have to move the x to the other side of the equation by subtracting x then we need to get the y by itself, so we divide both sides by 3, and this is our equation in slope-intercept form. y equals negative one-third x plus 2. So that tells me that the y-intercept, where this line crosses the y-axis, is here at 2. Now notice on this coordinate grid, y is the vertical axis, so we're going to mark off 2. That's where it's crossing. And the slope of the line is a negative one-third. Now we define slope as rise over run. So we could start here with this number two. And if the rise is negative one, we go down one. And then we're going to travel run um, three. So we're going to go over three, plot a point, And we can draw our line through those two points, the y-intercept in this last point. Or we could go down one again and over three and draw a line through this these two points so our line is going to look something like this that's what the graph of the line is going to look like 
So on this slide, what we're noticing here is, is a summary of everything. We have the slope, um, that's the change in y over change in x. That's what this little delta means here. We also know what the y-intercept is. The x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis, and that's when the value of y equals zero. So if I go back over here to my graph right here at this point, that would be my x-intercept. And the slope-intercept form of any straight line is y equals mx plus b. So let's look at an example. In our problem here, we've got 24x minus 9y equals 16. And we're trying to find the characteristics of this linear equation. Well, the first thing we're asked to do is to find the slope-intercept form of the equation. And to do that, we've got to solve for y. So we're going to take this equation that's given and get y by itself on one side. So I need to move that 24x. So my first step looks like this. It's going to be negative 9y. And I'm moving the 24x to the other side. So that's minus 24x plus 16. So we're getting the y on one side by itself. The next step is to divide both sides by negative 9 because I want to get rid of that coefficient. So dividing through by negative 9 on both sides of the equation, um, y ends up being equal to now 24 over 9, both of those numbers are divisible by 3, and they're negative, so we're looking at 8 thirds x. And then I want to take 16 and divide it by negative 9, so that's negative 16 ninths. So that's our first step, is to put the equation in slope-intercept form. The next step, we want to find the y-intercept. And to do that, we replace x with 0. So if I go back up here to this equation, and um, in the place of that x, I'm going to put a 0. That's going to be um, this whole term drops out. 8 thirds x got 0. And my answer for y is negative 16 ninths. Now, if we write that as a decimal, negative 16 divided by 9, notice that ends up being negative 1.78. So that's our y-intercept, that ordered pair, 0, negative 1.78. The x-intercept occurs when we replace the y with 0. Um, so that's a little bit more involved as far as the work. Not much, but um, so the y is 0, and we get 8 thirds x minus 16 ninths. And we want to solve for x. So I move the 16 ninths to the other side. So now that gives me 16 ninths equals 8 thirds x. And then to solve for x, I need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 8 thirds. So I'm going to multiply the right side by 3 eighths. And I'm going to multiply the left side by 3 eighths. So all of this cancels out, leaves me with just x. And here I can reduce a to go into 16 two times. So we end up having 6 ninths. Oops, I could have reduced this too. Let's do that. 3 are going to 3 and 3 are going to 9 three times. So I end up with 2 thirds is equal to x. So our x-intercept is 2 thirds 0 or 0.6 seven zero. So notice this is our x-intercept right here. The slope of the line, that was that um, up here in our equation for y equals mx plus b. 
that's 8 thirds, and that as a decimal is 2.67. And the last thing we're going to look at in Lesson 5, 1 together, is this idea of graphing a line using technology. And we're going to be using our TI-84 calculator for this. Um, so we want to talk about, you know, how to set up a good viewing window, um, get the equation of a regression line, one that models the data that's given, that sort of thing. So to begin with, let's look at a problem. And our problem here, um, says the following table gives the weld dimensions, the diameter D in millimeters, and the shear strengths S um, for a sample of spot wells. Find the equation of the regression line and then estimate the shear strength of a spot weld that has a diameter of 4.5 millimeters. Well, Notice here we've got some information that's given. So we need to look at this on a grid. Um, so we're thinking of this like this is a list of ordered pairs that we need to put into our calculator. Well, to do that, um, we're going to press this key. It's called the STAT key. So when you press STAT, the very first thing that comes up here is edit. So we're going to enter. And it's going to allow us to edit a list. Now, the last time this calculator was used, some stuff is in there. So I need to clear this list out. So to clear the list, I'm going to arrow up to the name of the list. Notice it's got everything in the list listed here. I'm going to hit the clear key and then arrow down. Notice the list is gone, but the sh there's like a shadows there. Arrow down and it's gone. And I want to do the same with list two. I need to arrow up. See, this is saying list two, item one. But we need to arrow up to the name of the list, hit clear, and then arrow down. So in list one, I'm going to put in these numbers, um, 4.2, and then enter. And it takes me to the next value, 4.4, 4.6, 4.7, Five point zero, five point two, and five point four. Then I want to arrow to the right for the Y list of values, or in this case is S. So I'm going to type in those numbers in the second list. We've got 51, 54, 69, 76. <clears throat> Excuse me, 75, 85, and 89. Now, I want to tell the calculator to do a linear regression on these two sets of points. Um, so it's going to, what the calculator is going to do is figure out what is the best fit line that would go through all of these points. Now, the line's not going to contain all the points, but what would be the best line for that? So to do that, we go back to STAT, so pressing the STAT key, and we're going to arrow over to Calculate. These little things up here are like tabs, if you want to think of it like that. So this is a tab, and we've got these files here. So if I tab over to Calculate, we've got all these things that we can do. Well, we're going to choose number four. And to choose number four, we can either arrow down to number four and hit enter, or we could just press the number four. So, and with this, I want to say, okay, I need you to use for my X list, list one, my Y list is list two, and I don't have a frequency list. Frequency list would mean if you're, if you're counting things more than once, um, you'd have a frequency list for that. And this allows us to store the regression equation. No, we don't need to do that either. So we're just going to arrow on down and calculate. So we're using list one, list two, and we're calcu calculating the linear regression. And when I key and enter, this is what I get. So it tells me, okay, notice this looks just like y equals mx plus b, except it's a, but that's, that is the slope. <clears throat> so it's telling me that for this line, um, back over here, We've got y is equal to 32x. Draw that. 